This Deep South state has been a Republican stronghold. Year after year, you'll see electoral maps, and year after year, they're red. But don't let the maps fool you. Few may have expected Democrats to sweep the 2020 presidential and Senate races in Georgia. Georgia's changing demographics, grassroots organizing, and a huge Democratic investment transformed the once Republican stronghold into a swing state. So what about other deep red Southern states? Can what happened in Georgia happen in Mississippi, the blackest state in the United States? The state that Nina Simone used as an example to spotlight the horrors of racist violence. The state where black people have seen their right to vote violently attacked. Well, it's no secret that Mississippi has a, a brutal, a brutal history uh, of different efforts to suppress, uh, suppress votes. And the state that Democrats seem to have left behind. And I think that there's opportunity for the Democratic Party, uh, opportunity to, to reach out to, you know, a forgotten state, a forgotten people. Mississippi has the largest percentage of Black people of any state in the nation. And Black people are the most reliably Democratic demographic. In 2016, 81% of Black Mississippians were registered to vote, and 69% went to the polls. Keep in mind that Republicans control all the levers of power in Mississippi. This means redistricting, which often limits the power of Black voters, goes unchallenged. According to a study by Pew, 63% of Democrats in Mississippi are Black, and 88% of Republicans are white. And yet despite its large Black population, in a state with just under 3 million people, Mississippi's white voters have overwhelmingly voted for Republicans for a long time. In fact, the last Democrat to win Mississippi in a presidential election was Jimmy Carter in 1976. Mississippi is such a lock for Republicans that President Trump didn't even bother making campaign stops there in 2020 and still beat Joe Biden by 16.5 percent. So flipping Mississippi is no small feat. This is Chukwe Antar Lumumba, and he's the mayor of Jackson, the state's capital and largest city. He became the city's youngest mayor in 2017 at age 34. It's no secret that Mississippi has a, a brutal, a brutal history of, of different efforts to suppress, uh, suppress votes. Uh, not only the, the literal uh, massacre and, and, and uh, you know, turning uh, people who are trying to, to vote into martyrs uh, in that effort, uh, but we, we continue to see that, uh, you know, the history of Freedom Summer uh, speaks, speaks to that and, and, you know, how people were trying to rescue themselves. Uh, and that still exists. Uh, it, it may wear a different face. It may be portrayed in a, in a different fashion. But one party Republican rule in Mississippi didn't come out of nowhere. The fact that Mississippi is, has, been, has long been a red state, it's not about apathy. It's not about black communities or poor communities not being willing to do the work of bringing about change. That story has actually been one of, of voter suppression and policy and the threat of violence. He's right. White supremacist terror has depressed black votes, driving Democrats to give up on the state and further entrenching Republicans. After the Civil War, all men, black and white, over 21 were eligible to vote. You saw the election of people like uh, Hiram Rebels and, and, and uh, John R. Lynch. That came on the heels of the, the uh, Civil War, at the conclusion of the Civil War, uh, where uh, ex-slaves, uh, formerly enslaved people, black people, had the right to vote immediately after the war. That progress ended in 1890 when white Mississippians, fearing the power of the newly enfranchised black electorate, amended the Constitution to restrict black people from voting. After 1890, fewer than 9,000 black people of voting age out of 147,000 were registered to vote. On top of that, Mississippi had the highest number of lynchings from 1882 to 1968. To put that in perspective, Martin Luther King Jr. gave his I Have a Dream speech 
in 1963. Union soldiers retreated and, and left uh, people exposed in the South, left people exposed in Mississippi. And then you saw the rise of the Ku Klux Klan and the genocide that they portrayed across, uh, across the state and across the Southern region. Uh, and at that time, uh, that's when people made a great exodus out of Mississippi. Former governor and then U.S. Senator Theodore Bilbo and member of the Ku Klux Klan in 1946 doubled down on anti-Black racist rhetoric during his re-election campaign. I call on every red-blooded white man to use any means to keep the away from the polls. Skip ahead to today and voter suppression hasn't ended. It's taken on a new form. A 2020 study found that Mississippi remains among the most difficult states to vote in. Last year, civil rights groups also sued the state over unconstitutional absentee ballot restrictions. I think that's why we continue to see an assault on voting rights in Mississippi. I think that's why we tend to continue to see um, not much sort of give as it relates to access to the ballot. Because while you have more people who would be able to exercise their right to vote, um, then that threatens the power structure that currently exists. Historically, poll taxes, literacy tests, and voter ID laws were used to obstruct the Black vote. While poll taxes and literacy tests have been abandoned, strict voter ID laws remain. And for those returning home from prison, voting is even more out of reach. See, that's why we continue to fight to make sure that our returning brothers and sisters from the correctional systems uh, who be, who have been, who, who really, when they disenfranchised by one of the 22 crimes that you can be disenfranchised to vote in Mississippi, it's a lifetime ban. The only way they can get their right to vote is they have to petition, petition the state legislature through an individual suffrage bill that the body votes on to restore their right, outside of being pardoned, right? Some of those crimes include larceny, robbery, but also bigamy and writing forged checks. 16% of Black Mississippians can't vote because they've been convicted of one of 22 crimes. Dr. Foster sees another important factor that impacts elections in Mississippi. Poverty is an obstacle uh, for, for communities to, to exercise their due right uh, to vote, to, to elect folks to represent their interests. A third of Black folks in Mississippi live below the poverty line. It also takes a combination of factors to flip states blue, including changing demographics. And that's a major hurdle to cross if activists want to flip Mississippi. While Mississippi is home to the largest percentage of Black people, it's not changing as quickly as Georgia, where pockets of the state are getting younger. Unlike Mississippi, Georgia and a few other Southern states have seen metropolitan areas receive an influx of highly educated liberal professionals and high paying jobs. Brain draining, where in folks, when they are educated, when they do earn four year degrees, they don't stay, they go. Uh, and so, so in a lot of ways, the demographic fortune of Mississippi is, is different from Georgia and, and starkly so. Both Mississippi and Georgia are similar in terms of the age of the population. Uh, so there are some similarities, but I think the differences uh, would require uh, some, some thinking and, and a different type of attention when it comes to, to strategizing, uh, sort of organizing and, and, and voter, uh, voter registration campaigns on the ground. So if Mississippi is facing so many challenges, what needs to happen for the blackest state in the U.S. to flip blue, or at least become competitive? You might not know this, but Stacey Abrams, who earned praise for her organizing efforts in Georgia that helped flip the state blue, is a Mississippi native. She actually declared the state a battleground ahead of the 2020 elections and set up her Fair Fight organization in Mississippi, which had been effective in organizing voters in Georgia. So we weren't strangers to Mississippi, but the idea of this organization um, they look at it as like a national organization. Re Republicans um, didn't like the, that at all. And some very, very, very old Democrats was like, we don't need Stacey Abrams here. And literally had to sit down with the election commissioners um, and tell them, we're here to help you. The mayor suggests that if Democrats deliver on their promises, there's a chance for a political breakthrough. Well, well I would argue Jackson's about 80 to 85 uh, percent black city uh, and so you know when we throw away throw around terms like minority 
uh, I'm not a minority in my community, uh, you know, and, and so uh, the power dynamics, the, the economic opportunities should reflect that. Other than having a long history of voting Republican, Mississippi also hasn't elected a Black person to office at the state level in 130 years. It also comes down to whether Democrats are willing to do what it takes to actually flip a state. It's going to take a huge investment. Um, that's something Georgia had. And I know a lot of people try to compare uh, Mississippi to Georgia. I mean, for valid reasons of what just happened. But the amount of money that just went into that just went into Georgia, Mississippi has not ever seen that, right? I think if the the type of investment is put into the state, we, we can make it happen. Ultimately, activists on the ground know that flipping Mississippi is going to be an uphill battle because it's going to take two things happening simultaneously. More white voters need to cross over from the Republican Party to the Democrats, and that seems unlikely. There also needs to be a massive turnout of Black voters who have to overcome both voter suppression from the Republican Party and increasing disillusionment with the Democratic Party. I believe that we can no longer allow the Democratic Party uh, to neglect Mississippi, uh, nor can we allow the Republican Party to take Mississippi for granted. 